If anybody is having any issue with the speed, please, they are free to tell me. I'll slow it, slow it down because I'm actually a bit fast, I know. Uh, if you need it to bit, uh, keep it slow, just tell me in the chat box, ma'am, please go slow, okay? This we have done food chain, food web, all these things, okay? On Saturday, energy flow, I told you about dissipation of energy. One ten percent law, only 10% is transferred to each tropic level. Biogeochemical cycles we have done in which we have completed nitrogen cycle. Finally, in which ammonification, nitrification, denitrification and water cycle this we have done. I think so you have done the questions also. Now we have to start with the ecosystem services. Okay. Ecosystem services. So what is ecosystem services? First of all, the thing which the nature is providing you. Okay. What? Water, minerals, fuels, wood, soil, agriculture, all these things food production okay all these things who is providing you suppose soil is not there in the environment can you grow the uh, crops without soil we cannot grow can it, is it possible to grow the crops into rocks it's not possible so when what are what all are the things which is provided by ecosystem to you and also it is useful to us that is ecosystem services so what do you think? If you want to list it down, please give me five things as it is in the activity. Please list me five things that ecosystem is providing you or nature is providing you in the layman language if I want to say. Nature is providing you and that is very, very important. Each one of you list, name all the five things. I'm just waiting for you. Type it in the chat box. In chat box, you have to type. Ma'am, services uh, meaning what the ecosystem provides us. What? Ma'am, uh, the ecosystem services, the, the things which they provide us. Hmm. You have to list. You have to list five things. What you are getting from ecosystem? Okay. Okay, Gitika answered. Nice, Gitika. Vedant answered. Nice, Vedant. Tabish, very nice. Very nice. Sand for glass means, can you please explain? Tabish. Bhavesh, very nice Bhavesh.
Jyotika, I'm waiting for you. Have written the answer? Have, haven't I seen? Jyotika, waiting for you, Bache. Yeah, okay. So, like air, water, soil, minerals, food, shelter, everything is given by what? Nature is an ecosystem services, okay? Which you are using, utilizing, and you have to save them for future generation as well. It is not like that. If water is available in tons of liter, you utilize all those things. It must be a proper distribution. That is why that is known as sustainable development. Means meeting the requirement of present people and also saving that thing for the future generation is sustainable development. Okay, fine. Now, the next topic is adaptation in organisms. What is adaptation? First of all, a feature of plant and animal or plant or animal to adapt at a particular habitat. Do you think the lizard present in desert is similar to the lizard present in a forest, their adaptation? Yes or no? No, Gitika is saying no. Only Gitika is learning. What about else? No, Dabish is saying no. Jyotika is saying no. Babish and Vedant. Are you saying yes? No, Bhavish. Vedant? No. Okay. So, no, because the thing which is present in desert, it should be adapted to desertic conditions. You have seen so many things, even if you not belong, belong to Rajasthan, you have seen in the pictures, there are sand dunes, huge sand dunes are there, high temperature is there. Okay, in that condition, the animal should be properly adapted to that area. And the animal which is living in aquatic condition should be adapted to aquatic condition. Okay, similarly, humans are living on the terrestrial condition on a land. Fishes are living in the waters. That is why fishes have gills, humans have lungs. So that is actually a type of adaptation or this is a body uh, changes, bodily changes which help them to survive for betterment okay so what are the why they actually adapt themselves so these are four points which you have to remember successfully compete for the food second defend themselves by for the attack of uh, by other organisms find favorable condition to reproduce respond efficiently to the change in environment very very important point so that they can compete for food for with the other organisms they can protect themselves from the attack of any other organism they can find a favorable place for reproduction so they can what produce more and more number of species on the earth then they should respond to the efficiently to the change in environment that is actually adaptation Okay, so now you will, you guys will only tell me, uh, no need of like gasping all the things and uh, like uh, all those things you will easily remember, okay? For example, if I give you a question that a plant in water is growing in water and a plant 
is growing in desertic area means you can say a aquatic plant a desertic plant is there so what do you think in which plant the root system will be the strongest you have to write the answer in the chat box chat box tabish chat box you have to write the answer in the chat box either uh, desertic plant or the aquatic plant in which plant the root system will be the strongest tabish have written the answer and it's correct bhavish okay waiting for jyotika okay gitika correct okay vedant vedant and bhavish okay you are saying aquatic let me tell you in aquatic just an example water is everywhere okay if water is present everywhere it can be easily exchanged through the roots okay so no need of hard root system over there root system help a plant to absorb water and take it towards leaves in upward direction okay so root system will be strongest in desertic plants the reason behind it because desertic plant has they in that condition water scarcity is there and less water is available when less water is available so root should be that much strong that it can go deep into underground water system and can take water from the underground that is why the strongest root will be find where in desertic plants not in the aquatic plants because in aquatic plant all condition is water no need of having that much amount of root and strong root little bit root of is also there then it can conduct water easily because water is available any time okay so you can see the, how aquatic plants are adapted with less root how desertic plants are adapted with high number and strongest roots so this is the difference both are plants but conditions are different environment conditions are different that is why they adapted accordingly okay so first and first we are going to do the topic that adaptation in case of aquatic plant what are aquatic plant known as hydrophytes what we call them hydrophytes means the plant which live in water the plant which live in water are hydrophytes so hydrophytes will have reduced root system because water is easily available water is easily available in aquatic system so they won't have that strongest root system it will be very less okay next floating leaves have stomata on their upper surface and while submerged will have no stomata at all first of all please with your true heart tell me do you guys know about stomata just you can shake your head like this or this do you know about stomata jyotika no you don't know vedant oh please turn on your recordings camera jyotika and vedant it is mandatory every time okay so the stomata are present on the surface of leaves i tell the function stomata helps in the transpiration of water into water vapors okay so extra water from the leaf is evaporated in the form of water vapor is through stomata and also it helps in gases exchange that is carbon dioxide and oxygen okay so this is the function of stomata but in case of aquatic plant in case of aquatic plants lower surfaces of the leaf which is submerged or either in contact with water it does not have stomata only the surface which is in contact with air is having stomata okay stem and leaves will be very thin 
why they will be very thin so they can uh, adjust according to the water flow wherever the water is going if strong stem is found strong leaves are found then it must be in the case of lakes or ponds because the water is still so if you see this thing these are hydrilla very thin thin uh, leaves are there this is valisneria well, water lily and lotus okay so these all are the aquatic plant now aquatic adaptation in animal streamlined body if you see a fish a mouth this shape if you see a fish they have a streamlined body which reduces friction with the water what is streamlined means pointed at the both ends if you have a, ever have seen the fish then in fish you can easily see that mouth is also pointed and ta tail region is also pointed one okay that is why we call that structure as streamlined so it can easily move in water it can easily move in water so they have streamlined body next their uh, skin will be hairless smooth okay which actually causes little friction their feet will be webbed webbed have you ever seen frog frogs feet are webbed so it can swim into water okay they will have fins for swimming fish will have or whale will have flippers for swimming long necks will be there cranes uh, the bird which is actually aquatic they will have long necks so they can move their neck inside water and can take out food like fishes they will have fat deposition of fat that is actually known as blubber that fat is known as blubber which store uh, store fat and oil between the skin which provide them insulation uh, from the winter in the winter season this is actually the diagram of whale they will have gills to respire okay mm, that is the adaptation so this is fish this is duck in duck you can see the legs are webbed so they can easily swim the fishes are pointed at both the ends that is why body is stream streamlined okay now terrestrial adaptation like terrestrial are known as mesophytes mesophytes means who are living into moderate condition and xerophyte means who are living on scarcity of water there is scarcity of water that is actually xerophyte desertic condition now mesophyte adaptation will be not that much uh, extremely extremely seen first of all the it will be a simple plant with root stem and leaves well organized everything stomatal number will be uh, equal on both the sides whereas as when you compare a mesophyte with the xerophyte see they won't have any leaves leaves will be transferred or modified into spine like structure if you have seen the cactus the diagram is also so showing cacti they have spine like structure that spine was earlier leaf only but it modified into spine to reduce the transpiration because to reduce that transpiration and stem it become green in color so it can do photosynthesis it consists of chlorophyll so it can do photosynthesis they have mucilage inside so they can store more and more amount of water have you ever seen aloe vera aloe vera if you cut down the aloe vera you will find a jelly like substance in between it okay so that jelly like substance is what mucilage that mucilage help them to store more and more water so even if water is not available then then also they can survive okay adaptation in desertic animals in desertic animals uh, everybody know that they don't have that much of water to drink so do you know about camel 
camel is a uh, ship also known as ship of desert it can go without water it can walk without water for seven days okay so that is a feature of camel uh, his feet is very padded and soft it is not hard or having hoof they are very soft so they can walk in sand easily they are broaded structure so they can walk in sand easily that is why we call them sh uh, ship of what uh, desertic areas basically and they can live without water just a second yeah yeah Vedant. yeah they are long also so they will be away from the hot sand that is nice so they have already given this diagram so if you have seen the hump on the camel this hump this actually store the fat molecule so whenever this fat is burned down the body it generates water it generates water inside the body that is why camel can live for seven days without water and it generates metabolic water that water is known as metabolic water and they can form concentrated urine they can form concentrated urine which consists of less and less water their screen skin is very dry so that they can uh, means the loss of water will be very very less see here it is here it is written a camel can drink very large amount of water in one day and survive relatively long time without drinking any water they can excrete concentrated urine when there is water scarcities and reduce the loss of water okay so this is very very important okay now adaptations for the extreme cold okay adaptation from the extreme cold i think so everybody has seen the polar bears and penguins penguins will have high amount of fat polar bear will also have high amount of fat layer to provide insulation from the heat they will have this hair large hair so that they will be prevented from the cold climate so cold climate animal will have shorter ears they will have shorter ears no tail at all smaller nose and smaller mouth because it has seen the animals who are having larger ears larger or longer tail and larger nose are present in warmer conditions so these are your extremities these are extreme points these extreme points releases high amount of heat if they are very large they release large amount of heat from the body so in colder environment the animal will have these things smaller so the release heat will be very less and it can be stored into the person's body or the animal's body so it helps them to conserve heat and this rule is known as allen's rule this rule is known as Allen's rule. It is not mentioned, but in the higher classes, when you go into 12th and study about biology, it will come under Allen's rule. A-L-L-E-N-S, Allen's rule. What does it say? The mammal living in cold climate, mammals living in cold climate are adapted to cold climate by having shorter legs, ears, and tail which help them to conserve the heat that is allen's rule now what will be the aerial adaptation i think so everybody know streamlined body like fish they will have pointed beak and the pointed tail they will be arboreal. Arboreal means who are living on trees 
and they can go and glide around from one place to the other it can be flying squirrel flying lizard lemurs monkeys everything birds and bats are true aerial true aerial means which can um, fly from one place to another and can cover a huge distance aboreal means who can run and glide on the trees okay running and gliding is not actually flying if you have seen flying squirrel they will just open their arms and a skin fold will come they actually move from one place to the other i'll show you the flying squirrel first of all i don't know you have seen it or not flying squirrel it will be similar to squirrel only see this how they fly can you see the diagram they have this skin fold large skin fold. if you they want to go from one uh, tree to other tree they just go jump oh, what happened they just go and jump and they will open their arms wide and they help in gliding they help in gliding okay so this is actually arboreal technique monkeys can move easily through their hands from one branch of tree to the other branch can jump okay so similar to that only these are arboreal and true flyers are bats and birds they are true flyers okay so true flyers will have streamlined body wings and feathers on their body bones will be hollow bones will be hollow to reduce their weight flight muscles are there which constantly provide them energy okay 